Um, it can be easy to be uh, complacent when uh, we're looking at the weather, but uh, we're here today to launch um, Operation Nomad, which is the police response to the threat of bushfires in South Australia in support of the Country Fire Service and the Metropolitan Fire Service. The focus is on reducing the incidence of bushfires caused by deliberate, reckless and negligent human activity and importantly raising community awareness of the risks of fires. In the lead up to Operation Nomad, police across the state have been working actively with community groups, schools, local government, providing education material that assists them to make sure that they're safe and their families are safe and their communities are safe to prevent fires from starting. Police have also been attending caravan parks where we do a lot of work in that area in relation to travellers coming into South Australia and travellers in South Australia to make sure that they can move safely throughout the state. Our police patrols will be deployed at various levels throughout the fire danger season depending on the ratings of the day and in addition to police patrols on the ground we'll also be supported by polair from above so you've got eyes on the ground and eyes up above. This season, like every other fire danger season, police will be monitoring a number of persons of interest uh, who pose a high or significant risk. We ask that the community remains vigilant and be aware of the risks and reporting any suspicious activity or any suspicious fires or signs of fire that they might see. With the community's help, we can get through the fire danger season safely. There were a number of fires that started last year that had been caused by um, power tools on rural properties and we just ask and remind people about the risk for, of that and to be conscious of that. There are a number of offences that can be committed um, by people and it can, penalties can range from fines or if you're found guilty of deliberately causing a bushfire to life imprisonment. Last year during Operation Nomad there were about 58 suspicious fires and about 21 of those were deliberately lit and there were about six persons that we arrested, four reported for those and there were about 20 odd fines that were issued in relation to breaches of the uh, Act in relation to um, issues with you know, lack of fire extinguishers and, and lighting a fire in a fire danger period as well. So I'll let the Minister speak and then um, take any further questions. A deliberately, deliberately lit fire by a known firebug poses one of the greatest dangers and risks to our community when it comes to these warmer months. Not only does it put our community at significant risk, but it also stretches our amazing emergency services workers, firefighters and other volunteers who will have committed themselves um, already this season to significant responses through flooding emergencies that our state are facing. Um, it's idiotic to light a deliberately lit fire. It is deeply dangerous to light a deliberately lit fire. And our government is committed to ensuring that police and authorities have every tool available to them to prevent and catch firebugs. Police will monitor you. They will catch you if you are lighting a deliberately lit, lit fire. The South, South Australian government has also introduced into parliament laws that will give more um, ability for police to electronically monitor uh, convicted firebugs who continue to pose a risk to our community. I expect that that will pass the parliament in the next two sitting weeks and we are committed to seeing that available to police leading into this season um, uh, before the risk becomes more uh, real and more um, acute to the community. I'll ask um, Georgie Cornish from the CFS to make some further comments. Thanks very much, Minister. Uh, as the Minister and the um, Acting Assistant Commissioner have already said, it's really easy to be complacent when the weather is as such as it is outside. Um, what we're really urging the community to understand is, while it might feel cool and damp here in Adelaide, South Australia is a big state. There are an awful lot of uh, areas that are starting to dry out and the risk is real. As of last night, we've had 11 of the 15 fire danger districts come into the fire danger season. So we're really asking everyone to be vigilant. If you see suspicious or dangerous behaviour, we ask you to contact SAPOL and to use the Crime Stoppers number as well. It's really important that we understand that while our 13,500 volunteers are out there supporting the community, that it is a community effort to report these items. So we ask you to remember that the, the simple spark 
can just have such catastrophic impacts, not just to lives and property, but to communities for a long time after the event as well. As far as the electronic monitoring goes, yes. um, how far will that go towards the yeah, look, we're closely monitoring the passage of the bill through the Parliament. Uh, we'll take any tools available to our disposal. Um, we already closely monitor quite a number of persons of interest at different levels uh, throughout the fire danger season, and that elevates up on certain days, whether it's extreme or catastrophic. And uh, we, we believe that the legislation that's being passed and um, will give us an additional ability to be able to monitor some of those people in a different way. Do you know, would that be... Would that be that 83 persons of interest would all no. be eligible? Yeah, it, it won't be all those people, obviously. I think um, the way the legislation is, it'll be a much smaller group, uh, and then it's up to the mat for an application to be made to the Magistrates' Court to accept that application, agree to it, and then put measures into place. So it'll be a relatively a smaller number than that big 83 number. And that uh, number of persons that we're monitoring is very fluid. Uh, we have rigorous processes in place to continually have a look at people that um, will come onto the list, will come off the list. There are some in custody, there are some that come out of custody. There's different offences that get that get committed from day to day that might elevate someone to actually get put on the list. So it's a very fluid number of persons, but we'll certainly concentrate on the, the key people that we can uh, make an application. On a daily basis, can you just talk us through uh, how many boxes will be dedicated to Nomad? It's a statewide responsibility, and it really depends on the, the, the fire danger rating for the day. Uh, the higher it, higher up it goes, the more resources that get deployed in the different, different fire danger areas. So it's very difficult to say any particular number, but it's a key specific focus for South Australia Police, and uh, we'll determine the resources depending on the ratings and the dangers in the day in whichever districts. And, it's, and on some days when it's catastrophic, you know, particularly through the uh, you know, hills areas, then it's you know, all hands on deck. So. so, John, the police have just wrapped up an operation targeting people who are like on their phones or distracted while driving. Um, I think it's nearly 300 people were caught over a week either on their phones or doing behaviours where they were distracted. Can you just talk us through how dangerous that is for someone to be on their phone or distracted while driving? Yeah, look, regardless of the, um, despite the numerous campaigns that are put out and despite the, the high fines uh, that people can incur um, with using mobile devices, the risk is real. The, the risk is imminent in the, in when you're driving a car. If you're not 100% concentrating on what, what is actually occurring in front of you, the moment you put your head down to look at something, touch, touch your mobile phone, text message, read messages, look for a number to ring, your eyes aren't on the road. The minute your eyes aren't on the road, then there's a risk for someone, a young child, stepping out in front of the car and you've, you've caused a collision and you've killed a person. So, you know, we, we reinforce it time and time again. Put the phone, put it in the back seat, don't touch it, use your Bluetooth if you need to, you know, 100% focus on the road. The response of our emergency services, the SES, the CFS, supported by the MFS as well, has been just extraordinary. Uh, on behalf of the government, I say thank you. Thank you to them and also thank you to their families who will not have seen them for much over the last couple of days. Um, we will, and we are working um, very closely with communities to ensure that they are being uh, fully informed of the updates as a result of these major weather events ripping through the state, particularly up in the Adelaide region. But these events and others demonstrate acutely the extraordinary contribution that our emergency service volunteers do make to the safety of our community. Um, I spent some time just yesterday up around Blackwood and Upper Sturt with volunteers and I toured the area and saw firsthand the extent of the damage and it is really breathtaking and this was after a major clean up. So these volunteers that I spoke to had been working until 2am the night before 
Um, that day they were driving around the community just to let the community know that they were there, that the community were not forgotten and that the volunteers and our emergency services were responding and were there to help. And that speaks volumes to the care and the community values that our emergency services do have. I guess so. Are they starting to get fatigued and to say, you know, they've just gone past Saturday afternoon, Sunday, Monday, we're now into Tuesday, so what is the SES doing to manage that fatigue and are you looking to get support in from interstate potentially help? Our emergency service volunteers are tired, but they are being um, very acutely supported by other agencies. For example, the CFS and the MFS have and are continuing to dedicate very significant resources by way of strike teams. These are um, CFS and MFS firefighters who are boots on the ground in these communities assisting with cleanup, assisting with emergency response. So not only are our volunteers well trained and well drilled, but they are well backed up and well supported by our CFS and MFS who are dedicating resources on a 24-7 basis to supporting not only the SES but the communities affected. How long do you foresee the need for those strike teams to continue to operate for? How are we, is this going to be for the rest of the week or have you got a briefing on that? Mm. Look, those, those are operational decisions that will be made uh, hour by hour by, by our lead agencies, but, but my expectation would be that our, and as I have demonstrated so much in the past, that our emergency services will continue to dedicate themselves until the community need is exhausted. Have you received a briefing as to how many outstanding jobs this month? I'd, I'd, I'd have to get the most the most recent figures, but we are it's around 200, I believe. But I might just Rory confirm that. But every what what we are seeing is the taskings continuing throughout yesterday and today, and those taskings um, are also coming in. We've I've had some advice that that some members of the public may have held off communicating or contacting um, our authorities at the height of the storm. They're now doing that after the event has passed. So these taskings, whilst we're getting through them, they're also are more coming through because of the need that's coming through. And just to clarify, there's been no ask or offer for assistance from corresponding jurisdictions? Yeah, so, so the, the sharing of those resources across jurisdictions are well established. They're coordinated through some federal authorities. I've had no advice that we've put an ask in or request through of our interstate counterparts at this, at this juncture, but as we've demonstrated throughout the most recent, or through this year with the extraordinary flooding that's occurred in the eastern states, our volunteers and staff here out of SA are only um, too quick to jump on a flight and help out our colleagues in the state as well. And just on flooding, as you briefly mentioned it there, are you expecting another inflow update on Thursday from the bomb and the Murray-Darling Basin Authority? So as soon as we have updates, we will absolutely communicate that out to the public as soon as we have received it. Um, the advice that we have been receiving to date and that, that we have been communicating with the public is, is quite firm and that is that whilst we are expecting flows to be at the juncture they are at this, at this stage, the modelling has not been able to future predict rainfalls. So whilst we have been able to communicate out low, moderate and high probability flows, those continue to be updated and we will absolutely be working with the SES and the Department for Environment and Water to update that modelling as soon as information comes to hand. Yeah, You mentioned obviously that there's almost a false sense of security at the moment across particularly the Adelaide metro area and then the, the, the you know, sort of parts of the state where it might be raining in blue area because it is so wet as we approach fire agency. Yeah, the greatest challenge we have around that is um, that South Australia is a big state, so you can you can actually have a myriad of different climates or, or uh, challenges around that. The greatest challenge with the rainfall it means high fuel loads, and so what that will mean is ultimately when the weather warms, there will be a risk, and those those fuel loads and that grass will be ready to, to burn. So it can feel like we've been given a little bit of extra time right now but I can tell you that that's not the case. We've already seen up north, um, so the Pukaja Ernabella fire, 7,000 hectares, um, a, a decent size fire even for up there. So um, we are already seeing fires in the north and, and when it dries out, absolutely, the, the fuel loads will be enormous. Can I just, can I just, um, just touch on the mobile phone construction, <laughs> if you don't mind, yeah. Um, it's really, um, troubling to hear that, that the message doesn't seem to be getting through that distracted driving kills people. 
Distracted driving can not only cause you to lose your life, but it can cause serious injury or it can take someone else's life. We need people to fully grapple with the fact that if you are using a mobile phone while you are driving, you are likely to get caught by police. And that is why the state government has introduced laws into parliament to roll out mobile phone detection cameras, because the message just is not getting through. These mobile phone detection cameras will be another layer to ensure that people make the right decisions on the roads, because the decision you make on the road can be the difference between your life or costing someone else their life as well. When are we likely to see some of these things rolled out? And um, are there already some already out there? Yeah, so that's a new, it's a new initiative that the government has introduced. The um, bill is still before the parliament. I expect that that will pass um, subject to parliament's um, will this, this year and see the rollout of those detection cameras in 2023. Is there anything else that we can be doing? I mean, the campaign strength seems to be working. Is there, I mean, people mm. driving around here, all everything people on their phones. I think... And the fines as well, can we, can we lift them up? I mean, they're already pretty high, but what else? Education is incredibly important. I think most people who have children, even from a really young age now, would, would attest that their children in the back seat tell them to drive safely. My children are so much more aware of safe driving practices than I was, that I can remember as a child. And that's why multiple fronts of education, multiple people telling their own lived experience and their own stories about driver distraction and, dry, and, and road trauma will, will have an impact and does have an impact. Um, but the truth is that if people are determined to make dangerous decisions on the roads, then the government must be adaptive. And that is why we are absolutely committed to ensuring that we have mobile phone detection cameras rolled out for those people who are dedicated to using their phone rather than dedicated to getting home safely. And are there any other um, detection cameras in other states or in the first people to try it? And if there are others in other states, do you know how they're how successful? So there are rollouts across other jurisdictions, but they're quite early stages. So we haven't seen a long history of the rollout. However, there are they have been rolled out successfully in other states and South Australia will be utilising very similar technology once that procurement process has been finalised. Thank you. Thank you.